Hey guys, Kush here with Exoscribe TV, and today I want to talk to you about vitamin D supplementation. So first, we need to answer the question, what exactly is vitamin D? Well, vitamin D is actually a group of fat-soluble compounds that actually help form pre-hormones or precursors to hormones, uh, specifically one known as calcitriol, and we'll talk about that in a second. So when we think about how vitamin D is produced, it's produced either through ingestion, through food, or through the skin. Uh, and the best time to absorb the right light to produce it is between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., specifically from UVB rays. So as you can see in my diagram here, the sun's rays hit the skin and it helps form something called 7-dehydrocholesterol. That's the first initial form of vitamin D. This then converts to cholecalciferol, more of a vitamin D3, which then goes to the liver. Now if you got this from diet, you'd be getting this from uh, the same vitamin D3 from fish, from meat, from egg yolks, cheeses, etc. There's also a plant form, which is used usually to fortify supplements, and this is vitamin D2. Both of these also go to the liver, which then converts us to a more, more active form of vitamin D, known as 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D3. And this is what doctors are testing for when they're testing for vitamin uh, D deficiency, and we'll talk more about that in a second, why that's important. So this then goes to the kidneys, which is then converted to a more highly active form, uh, probably the, more, the highest actively form, vitamin D3, known as 1,2,5-dihydroxyvitamin D3, also known as calcitriol. And this is more of a, at this point, it's less of a vitamin and it's more of a uh, hormone, more of a steroid hormone, similar to estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol. So the main question you should be asking is, not so much, why do I need to be supplementing? Because the doctors want to always tell you to supplement. They'll you know, commonly tell you to supplement with as high as 2,000 to 10,000 IUs a day, or as much as 50,000 IUs in a week. And that's a lot to be supplementing with, and I'll tell you why. And the reason is that if your body is too low in vitamin D, you want to first understand why is it low? And the reason could be not because you're not producing enough from the skin, because let's say maybe you live in a climate where you don't get enough sunlight, or, or maybe you don't get enough in your diet. It's not maybe so much that your vitamin D is too low, it could be because your calcium is too high. And you know, calcium and vitamin D need to be in a proper balance. This active form, the calcitriol, helps maintain that balance, but the problem is if your body is not getting enough, let's say magnesium or other proper nutrients or cofactors, you could have too much calcium already in the blood. And so as kind of a negative feedback loop, if your calcium levels are already too high in the blood, your body is going to suppress your vitamin D production. So that's why you could be too low to begin with. So if you start supplementing with more vitamin D, all you're gonna do is tell your body to produce more calcium, putting you in a state of hypercalcemia, which is actually toxic for the body. So another thing to think about is vitamin A. So vitamin A is uh, another fat soluble vitamin that you can get from, from meats and also some vegetables that help also maintain balance of vitamin D. So if your vitamin A intake is too low, that could also be why you're not uh, utilizing and producing enough vitamin D, especially the more active forms. Let's go back for a second and talk about magnesium. So magnesium not only helps the body uh, consume and utilize calcium, but magnesium is also really important for uh, the metabolism of vitamin D. It's, it's part of the process for vitamin D metabolism. So, you know, another reason why vitamin D levels could be too low is that, you know, your magnesium levels are already too low to begin with, which is causing this deficiency or this, I should say, this inversion with your calcium becoming too high. And the reason for this is that so many of us are already so deficient in magnesium and, uh, you know, it's typically from, from our plant-based foods and and uh, because the fact that our soil has really changed in the last 50 years, we're inevitably going to be deficient, and the majority of Americans already are. So if you start supplementing with additional vitamin D, knowing the fact that we already use a lot of magnesium in the process of metabolizing vitamin D, it's just going to make an already deficient population in magnesium even more deficient in magnesium, which is again, going back to that feedback loop, making calcium even higher and that's going to go back and increase more toxicity in the body. So moving forward, another vitamin to be aware of is vitamin K, another fat soluble vitamin that really helps in the utilization of calcium. 
So again, when we talk about, you know, why is calcium so high and why is vitamin D low? Well, the calcium could be high because you're not getting enough vitamin K in your diet. So simply by supplementing with things like vitamin K with your diet or supplements and magnesium, you can help kind of reverse this toxicity and reduce the deficiency of vitamin D production and uh, conversion into the active forms. Vitamin A, as we spoke about earlier, not only helps keep a proper balance of vitamin D, but they both uh, conversely help each other reduce the toxicity of each other. So, you know, if you are subject to vitamin D toxicity because you're supplementing with vitamin D, just having more vitamin A in your diet can reduce the toxicity of vitamin D and vice versa. So the bottom line of this whole thing is that you have to have balance. You know, you have to have balance in your diet. You have to have balance like we've talked, we've talked about this many times in other videos where we talk about making sure that you have balance in your whole program as a whole and in your lifestyle. So, you know, make sure that when you're trying to reduce these deficiencies and you're trying to reduce toxicity of the body and pH imbalances that you're getting a wide variety of foods, especially, you know, as you've noticed, a lot of these are fat soluble, vitamin A, D and K, all three of those are fat soluble. So trying to get more animal based products and proteins and animal fats, not being afraid of those, the whole milk, especially when it's from grass fed, uh, unpasteurized milk and, and cows. So there you have it. Before supplementing with vitamin D, think about creating more nutritional balance in your diet. That's it for today. See you next time on Extra Scribe TV. See you soon.